Mate, are you sleeping in this morning, buddy? Huh? You one big fat tired pig. I know Olivia. It's hard to get him motivated. Oh, oh, he saw me scratch you. Boy, you see me scratch you? You got stuff on your face, brother. You got you got a little stuff on your face. Do you get jealous when you see me scratching her? Oh jeez. Alright, let's get you boogers fed. All right, little tubbies, y'all eat up. Stay warm. You too, big dog. Guys, you're probably wondering why they're over here. It's been like two weeks of just absolute frustration in the terms of our chickens. Uh, of course, two weeks ago, we shared with you all we had the attack of the neighbor's dog on our chickens, particularly uh, two of our I am Samanis, and the chicks were hiding and ended up, we showed you about two days later, everything seemed to be going pretty well. Well, actually it was a, the day the day after i shot that video i came back out here after work and unfortunately the one i am samani who had been injured previously was deceased the only thing that i could guess on that one was that it potentially could have been some kind of internal injuries that i was unaware of that eventually created some issues but now what does that have to do with this one well a few days later, I came home and I noticed that one of the baby chicks was gone, the brown one that I think would have been an Easter egg or cross. And I didn't, and then I found this one just kind of behind the coop and didn't go inside with the rest. And when I went up to her, she had the dark colored baby still underneath her but she looked like she had been attacked by something. Her, she had a scratch on her face. She didn't want to open up her eye, where I'm assuming that it could have got um, hurt as well. And she had her feathers just look kind of a little bit disheveled. And I didn't know what had, what had happened. 
And so my thought was, was that something got in there, um, something attacked the baby chick that was missing, and that I'm assuming this mama hen here tried to defend and protect what baby she still had. I didn't know what had happened, so I really went to bed that night very confused. Well, my work schedule has been all messed up. Uh, we've had a lot of childcare issues because of all this COVID stuff. And so pretty much my wife's been working during the day where she's a school teacher. I meet her in the evenings as soon as she gets off work, we trade off kids, and then I go to work for the nighttime. Um, and that's kind of what we've been doing. So I was here during the day, just the other day. So that morning though, I made sure I kept an eye on the chickens quite regularly so I could figure out what happened the previous night. Because whatever predator it was would probably be back. And sure enough, I looked outside late morning and I'm like, where are the chickens? They're nowhere to be found. And when I looked a little closer, I noticed they were all inside the coop. And I also looked over to the right and on one of the fence posts was a just great size red tail hawk staring at the coop waiting for its morning breakfast. I immediately came outside. I shoot off the hawk which flew to a nearby tree and just kind of stood there still watching. I checked on the chickens, nobody had been attacked at that point, which I was thankful of. So I kept an eye throughout the day and I was in and out the house periodically and I didn't see the hawk anymore. I told Mrs. Rocky Creek about it when we changed off the kids and said, hey, I think I know what happened to the baby chick. I, I saw a hawk, so on and so forth. Well, sure enough, there was about a two hour stretch in between me leaving to go meet her and her coming back here with the kids. And she said it was not very long after she had gotten home, she looked outside to check on the chickens and she thought it was weird that there was only one chicken out and the rest were in the coop and she thought maybe it was dust bathing by the movements. And then when she looked closer, she could tell that no, that's a hawk on top of the chicken. And unfortunately, we lost, uh, my wife calls it uh, Lady or Foxy Lady, her and Madison. It was our beautiful blue colored, just the one that's gray with the white crest on top. Uh, probably one of the prettiest chickens I've ever owned, but it was dead pretty much instantly when my wife came out and checked on it. And we're guessing it broke its neck or um, just the impact in and of itself killed it. Um, so yes, we have, unfortunately have lost three chickens in about a week. One to the dog attack, and then now I'm pretty sure two to this hawk. So I don't have time to waste. I gotta act immediately to try to deter this hawk. There's only but so much time today. We got a potential of up to a foot of snow coming here in the next few days. So we got preparations to do for that. So I have tried to go out to my local stores, find what I can for a quick fix to address this. Um, I do have a long-term plan to address this that I will share with you all at a later time, but I just don't have time right now, but I gotta do something, something's better than nothing. So I'm gonna try a combination of three things in hopes it'll buy me some temporary relief until I can do a permanent fix. So come along with me and let's see if we can deter this hawk and stop losing our chickens. So the first quick thing that I'm gonna try to do to deter this is gonna be using uh, one of these fake owls. Um, the, the hawk, every time I saw it, and according to my wife, it was always coming from, if you're facing our coop, from the right side. And that makes sense because that is kind of the more of the clear general area. We have our chickens under the trees for a reason, and that was to prevent aerial predators from getting to them. Well, it works until all the foliage is off the trees. So now that the foliages are off the trees, there is some openness to the front side of the chicken coop area. So my hopes is, is to put this on the front right corner facing toward towards the direction where they're at. Um, I actually purchased two of these because I didn't have many at the store. I thought one, I could use it if this one were to break and I needed a quick replacement. But then also two, I've, I'm contemplating on putting one on opposite corners, um, but we'll figure that out here as we go. But right now we're gonna get this one done. We're gonna stick it out here real quick. Um, all we're gonna do is it has this bottom fill spot. And so it didn't specify anything to fill it up with. So I'm gonna fill it up with sand to give it some weight because there's not really any good way to mount it. So we're just gonna take this sand and we're gonna try to fill this thing up as best we can to put weight into it. The sand's a little wet, so I can't really use a funnel because it just all collects. So it's gonna take a little bit of time, but we get it. So 
So as I was telling y'all, here's the front of the chicken coop. And where I've seen the hawk perching is usually right in this, between these two posts right here. And each time it flies away, it pretty much just flies over to that tree right there and then continues to watch. That's what I witnessed when I saw it. And according to my wife, uh, I believe she meant the same thing when she was telling me because where the Polish hen ended up getting killed was right in that area right there. So there it is. And I did it to where it's pointing back that direction. And my plan is to, to we put the sand in there, but obviously it still could easily with a high wind potentially blow over. So I can maybe tie around this base right here. And so I think I may be able to put like screws on the side of the post here, somehow tie around and tie to those screws, or at least that way, if it were to fall off, it wouldn't necessarily fall on top of a chicken or something like that, which chances of that happens pretty slim, but we'll try to rig it up somehow to where it's more reinforced, but winds are calm right now and hopefully this will work temporarily. So that's just one step we're gonna take. We got two more things we're gonna do to try to get temporary relief. So let me go grab that stuff right now so we can work on that. All right guys, so we got our owl set up over here to this side of me, but then I'm also gonna try to use out some of this stuff right here called Bird Be Gone flash tape uh, it's supposed to be it's just um, it's not like a sticky tape per se it's more like a foil film and pretty much it just says to cut it in about two to three foot lengths and tie it off of various tree branches or exterior posts or on you know ends of shrubbery or whatever it is that you may not want any kind of birds of any kind really to mess with uh, something about the reflection of it bothers them and they're not sure what to make of it so they tend to stay away uh, some people i've seen online also use cds but i honestly don't have any blank cds so this was actually a pretty cheap option it only i think was five dollars and you get 50 foot roll so for me five bucks hey if it doesn't work it's only five bucks not a whole lot but if it does work then that's a darn good five dollar spent so we're going to go ahead and put this up at various spots throughout here and let me grab my ladder so we can start doing that. I will say this stuff seems like it's got a pretty good toughness to it because I'm pulling on it pretty tight and it's holding pretty much all the tension to keep this branch down now. So I don't know if y'all can see it or not, and it may be reflecting, so I'm not really sure, but you might be able to see that there's actually like, you can see within it like vertical lines um, that run through it, you know, probably anywhere from about 15 to 20 or so lines, which I'm assuming is kind of like a reinforcement. Cause I mean, it's, it's pretty daggone strong. And I mean, it doesn't really break. So I will give it that. Um, and like I said, it was only $5. Now, one thing, that I do see in, that could be an issue on and off is that obviously right here, we're hanging it inside of the trees. So when the wind blows, it could get wrapped up in other branches. And when obviously sometimes then it can untangle and then retangle. And so there are moments where it could be ineffective. And because of that, I'm gonna go ahead and also place, I have wire at each corner. I'm gonna put one piece on each piece of wire at the corner. Um, it looks kind of weird. I'm not going to say it's not the most aesthetically pleasing thing because people are going to be like, what the world is that? But I'm tired of the hawk eating my chicken. So I'm going to take a chance for right now and maybe can at least be a fix until we get to springtime when all the foliage is back up.
Well guys, we got two strains there. And you can see up in the trees, we got multiples in the trees, particularly over here to this side. And then we also have some in the corner. I think this side shot right here gives you a pretty good look at how that kind of reflectiveness of that tape ends up going when the wind blows it. You can kind of see it switching between the red and the silver. So I don't know if this is gonna help to keep an hawk away or if it's gonna invite to have one heck of a chicken party over here. But nonetheless, that's what we're gonna do. It's what we can do on the fly and we're gonna hope for the best. I'll tell you what guys, we've never named this rooster right here, uh, but his tail feathers and just his feather coloring overall, but his tail feathers, especially with how high and arch they are with the color patterns, I think he's one of the best looking roosters I personally have ever seen. Not just that I've owned, but that I've ever seen. If his comb was straight up and not flopped over the way it is, I would argue to say that he's one of the best looking roosters overall, but I just love the colors of him. I love those tail feathers. For those that are new with us, he's a cross between Crest of Cream Leg Bar and Easter Egger, but he's ended up being great. He's been a great rooster. Um, he's not the alpha, as Bruce is definitely our alpha, which is why he does all the yelling, but pretty much first thing in the morning, Bruce and the no-name chicken, maybe y'all can give me a name for him, and we'll start calling them that, but they tend to have a little bit of a tussle that lasts about all of five seconds in the morning, and Bruce establishes dominance. So he's the good looking one, but Bruce is my muscle. So you may have noticed in the start of this video that I grabbed their feed bowls from over there where I usually feed them each day. And I moved them to over here in between these two coops and kind of over here towards where their water is. The reason why I did that is because when I was doing some research is they said that oftentimes the hawk will attack the chicken when it's eating. Um, or scratching around in the grass where basically it's heads down and it's not paying attention. It's about moment of opportunity. So because both of the attacks seem to have been over in this area, it made me suspect that that was probably the case when they were eating or when they may have been getting some scratch grain. So I thought if I move it in between two structures over here, it would decrease the likelihood of both them not paying attention and the hawk seeing that or also to create more obstructions to make it more difficult for that hawk to get a clear flying path to be able to get to them, which may give them more time to get into their coop or to seek some kind of shelter to get away from it. Now guys, I'll let you, I will say, I always knew that the one predator that I'm not set up for to, to prevent from getting to my chickens was a hawk. Um, I did take some precautions through the processes to try to minimize that. And some of that was we added the I am Samanis for two reasons. Number one, Madison really wanted them. She had seen them, was all about them, uh, those in Polishes. So part of it was to get my daughter something that she really likes, which gets her more involved with this. But then secondly, I am's are solid black. And one of the birds that hawks do not like are crows. Crows will fight hawks in a heartbeat. And so I added those to the flock thinking, A, my daughter can really like them, she can enjoy them, she'll be involved, but also B, maybe it will give the disguise of crows within the flock and may prevent it. Obviously, you know what's going on with that, so it um, hasn't really worked out in our favor with the one being isolated now and the other one now deceased from the dog attack. But I also have other black chickens in our flock, such as our French black copper morans. So I think adding black chickens to your flock probably does help to some degree, but hawks are very smart and I think they figure it out over time, especially if it's a mixed flock. Um, if you have a solid flock of black chickens, um, then maybe you'll get by with it. But with a mixed flock, I would assume that they probably figure it out after due time. The other things that I've done to try to minimize the attacks, um, when I set up this entire structure was, I've always set my coop up in the middle. And the reason for that is so that the chickens have quick access to it no matter where they're at within the pen so they can get to shelter really quickly which I do think that they do a good job with that um, usually when you see them in here it's either because there's a predator in the area or it's just super freezing cold or inclement weather I think they're a little on edge right now obviously because they've been attacked twice in two days but hopefully with the new owl decoy up and the reflective tape this will give us some immediate relief as we get ready to prepare for a big snowstorm 
I mentioned we were going to do three things to combat this. Uh, we haven't done the third one. I don't think I'm going to have enough time today. I have to go help my father move some furniture to um, his house. So I'm going to go do that. But the third thing was going to be Madison and I uh, were going to build a, a scarecrow. Uh, we can work on that another time. All of you all, I'm sure, know about scarecrows and, and the ability of them to deter uh, birds and things that will mess with your stuff, And but you got to change their positioning every so often. I thought, hey, we'll give it a try. It'll be a little fun project for Madison and I, but all of you know how to put together a scarecrow or at least have seen them before, so that's not going to be anything of new information to you, but based off of what I've read and for our setup without putting something overhead, which that will be my long-term plan, but I'm doing some brainstorming on that. I'm thinking that um, some kind of grid line with fishing line or something to that effect will probably be the route that I go. I just really want to think out how I'm going to set that up. In the meantime, hopefully this will be a temporary fix and hopefully we'll minimize losing our chickens to hawks here in the very near future. I haven't seen the hawk today. I did have to leave for about an hour and a half with just the owl decoy out while I was doing this video, believe it or not and we haven't had an issue. So hopefully things are working. I'll keep you up to date as to whether or not it's working or not. And we'll probably bring you along here when we prepare for about a foot of snow because we do get snow here in Virginia, but a foot is a bit more than usual. So uh, we're gonna have some fun with that, but we also got some work to prepare for on the homestead. So that's really my focus now. I'm glad to have you all along with us. Guys, if you have any suggestions in terms of dealing with this hawk situation that maybe I haven't addressed or haven't thought about, please let me know in the comments below. Y'all have been phenomenal with that. But in the meantime, hope all y'all are doing okay. Y'all take care of yourself. Stay warm because it's getting cold for many of us. And until then, guys, y'all be good. And we'll see you here very soon on one of our next episodes. Thanks, guys.